Good afternoon and welcome to What's New in Service Mapping. Uh, my name is Luke Alabak. I am a Solution Sales Manager for IT Workflows. I'm honored to be joined by Robin Cincinnati, who's a Advisory Solutions Architect, and Lauren Miller, who is a uh, Solutions Consultant. They'll be running through the demo. I'll be doing a quick overview. Quick look at the Safe Harbor Notice for forward-looking statements, as there may be forward-looking statements made. Um, they should not be used solely for, for purchase decisions. So we'll be talking about ITOM visibility today and what our vision is. Uh, we'll be looking at what is service mapping. We'll tie in how machine learning and tag-based mapping have really taken that to the next level. And we'll finish it off with a demo and of course leave a couple minutes for, for Q&A at the end. Alrighty, before I begin, I wanna take a step back and show how ServiceNow can deliver digital change for your organization using our, our one platform. You may have heard this or you may have seen it on our website, but our whole purpose is to make the world of work work better for people. We create these great experiences for, for customers and employees and enable you to seamlessly connect everyone with your technology ecosystem. So whether that be your on-premise solutions or your cloud-based systems, our platform leverages all that data that you've invested in and enables you to manage your software that supports all of those systems that, that you have in place. We make that really simple by using our one architecture, which means that all the ServiceNow solutions that sit on top of ServiceNow use a set of capabilities that, that are common. Things like workflows and integrations, machine learning, AI, using a great web and, and mobile experience, as well as developer tools and, and a knowledge base and service catalog. We also use that one data model, which is the, the CMDB. That will be the central repository of configuration data that is really crucial in driving value across all those solutions and driving value in your organization's overall strategy. So we'll jump into ITOM visibility. The, the critical part of visibility is you need to understand what is the technology that underpins the, the services and components that generate revenue for your organization. As your infrastructure gets more complex, spreading across the cloud, on-premise and other services, you really need to have that system in place to get complete visibility into your infrastructure. Uh, the biggest driving factor in keeping your services running smoothly is a healthy service aware uh, CMDB. Seeing service changes in your cloud and hybrid environment, seeing who made those changes, what changes were made, all can avoid potentially major issues to internal and external services. And, and manually mapping those hundreds of services is, is not uh, realistic moving forward. So ITOM visibility is charged with, with keeping it healthy and giving those actual insights. And it does so with a whole host of capabilities that, that you see on your screen here. We have TLS certificate inventory management. We have service graph connectors where we develop these connections in conjunction with third-party vendors to ensure the right data is being pulled in and put in the right place in your CMDB. We have multi-source CMD capabilities. We have firewall audit and reporting dashboards. We have a discovery source in place. And what we'll be focusing on today, service mapping. So this is everything that goes into ITOM visibility. And these are just the suite of products that, that make it so impactful to, to gaining that full visibility into your infrastructure. So service mapping. At a high level, our service mapping framework creates a complete and accurate map of all the IT components that support a business service, including their dependencies and how they connect together to deliver those specific services. It discovers the applications, the servers, databases, virtual machines, network connections, pass and, and cloud resources, and all those other technologies that support your critical business services, right? So we provide a few ways of mapping services that we'll, we'll go over here shortly. Here's a great slide that I like to show to visualize the difference between discovery and service mapping from an outcomes perspective. So with discovery, it's our horizontal IP-based feature with ITOM. This will map those physical and virtual devices, the services and applications, and then the dependency relationships between them. And since agent list discovery is not for every scenario, we also just released the ability to to have agent discovery for those servers and end user computers. 
So discovery will create an inventory of everything you have out there, but there's not a lot of context. And service mapping is where we deliver that context. So our customers are typically interested in service mapping for specific use cases in their company. So for example, when you have a payment processing feature that you need to keep up and running at all times, and for any sort of reason, a server that supports that service starts to overload or starts acting slow when transactions are taking place. With service mapping, you can pinpoint where that's happening. And, and now you know that a specific server is out of memory and, and causing the issue, for example. Um, and by having that visibility into that broken part of the service, you can then notify and understand what other services are connected to that specific server and might be impacted by making a change by upgrading the server or diverting the traffic or what have you. Or if you can take uh, online shopping as another example, uh, you need to maintain that uptime to avoid poor end user experience. So think about when you visit a website or an app and you get that error that says it's too busy, try again later, or when you visit a web page and it continues to try to load over and over again, that is where service mapping can give you context as to why it's happening and how to avoid that in the future. By, by giving you that detailed view of, of where the traffic is going and, and where you need to pay attention to add resources in order to uh, support that service. So that's just a couple examples as to why and how service mapping is so impactful, but you can really take that and apply it to as many scenarios that, that need that constant uptime in order to generate revenue for, for your organization. So we can do mapping in a couple of ways. Um, with the top-down strategy, this one's very surgical and extremely detailed. So we discover the infrastructure, you give us that entry point, the place where an application begins or a URL, and we'll map vertically how it's connected in your IT estate. So from that entry point, we automatically discover the, the set of servers, network devices, and all those other IT components that provide a service. The result of that is a detailed map that all the configuration items are participating in that service and how the data are flowing, is flowing between them. So again, instead of just discovering these point-to-point -point dependencies without any context, it identifies those specific dependencies that support that business service and how it's delivered across domains. Top-down does map virtual machines and or on the premise and in the cloud. But if a virtual machine isn't fully discovered, tag-based mapping can be used to, uh, to bridge the gap there. I'll also add that we've made tremendous improvement with um, to top-down strategy by adding this traffic-based based approach and a machine learning approach as well, which uh, Robin and Lauren will, will take you through how we do that. So if you heavily rely on those cloud resources and you have a tagging strategy in place, we can automate from those tags from the metadata pulled in. So we'll discover that virtualized, hyper-converged, multi-cloud components, and then populate that into the CMDB for that, for that common data model, right? So tag-based mapping really complements top-down service mapping. So this will just give you that added context to, to what other components are, are used in a service spreading throughout the cloud. The other way we can map services, we can take in information and flow maps from, from third parties, such as Dynatrace or New Relic or AppDynamics, and help provide a more detailed service map and give that additional layer of context on top of that. I will add, uh, we've really invested in machine learning to allow teams to reduce the time and resources needed to, to manually map services. And we've seen that we can take the time down to map services from, from days to minutes or hours with machine learning. So utilizing service mapping is, is typically clear as to why you want to map those individual components to see you know, how making a change impacts multiple services. But those manual processes can take a lot of resources and experts to map one by one. So that's where machine learning can really take the load off, help speed up the process and, and take it to the next level. So these are the stages of, of our tag-based uh, service mapping. You'll, you'll do that tag discovery. You define the CI categories. You define the tag service associated with those categories. There's a step to create candidates and services because you don't necessarily want to create a bunch of maps you're, you're not interested in. We only create those candidates that 
that you can then go in and say, yeah, we want to use this or, or we're not interested in this one. And then once that's created, uh, ITOM will take over um, and monitor all the services. I also wanted to put this in here. This, uh, this is a new feature to ITOM that is just getting rolled out. Uh, it's our way of automating the governance of tags. Uh, the challenge we see is that there's a rapid deployment of resources into the cloud by many people, many tools, and multiple environments. So it can be difficult to enforce those tag policies and, and maintain compliance without that centralized system. So what we're doing is bringing in that data into that one dashboard and help audit those tags in the CMDB and, and ensure compliance. We can also help remediate those tags in the cloud with an ITOM governance entitlement, which will be released in the, in the near future. So the outcomes, um, you know, you, you will ensure that you have compliance with your tagging policies for both those existing and newly deployed resources. So for example, if somebody deploys a new resource in the cloud and they weren't tagged correctly, the next audit that you run through ServiceNow will identify those, create a task to remediate those incorrect tag resources. It'll help you understand the, the ownership and usage of those cloud resources. It'll provide uh, the complete traceability of tag history and any of those changes made. So again, this is our is a new feature and we'll send out information um, after the webinar ends um, that you can go in and take a look for yourself, or of course you can uh, contact your ServiceNow representative. Just a quick look at the actual dashboard. Um, you have a couple metrics here. You know, you uh, indicate how well the CIs are tagged. You can see how many CIs are covered under tag policies, how many are not, and then you can compare the uh, the health ratings over time. All in on this customer example of how service mapping and discovery really transformed their infrastructure. So Toyota, they have over 360,000 employees and users that interact with their network, and they really needed a way to identify those broken workflows and improve their overall system that they have in place. And at the end of the day, they need to ensure that they have a better user experience for both customers and employees. So they took discovery and they took service mapping to see everything they have in their, in their environment and how it's all connected together. And you can see uh, in the solution side, they gained a complete picture of their network for the first time, which is huge considering uh, how many people uh, use their network daily. You can see some of the results at the bottom, but I'll point out that they have instant resolution of, res of incidents, which previously took over an hour to really diagnose and pinpoint where that issue was happening and the downstream effect of it. I'll end at the quote at the bottom, service mapping has been the biggest change for us by far. Our major incident management process changed overnight because it showed us how everything connects together. So with that, I appreciate your time. I'm going to pass it over to Lauren for a quick demo. Awesome. Thanks, Luke. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Let me know when that pops up, please. Okay. Awesome. So I'll be demoing today our machine learning connection suggestions. That's a mouthful. So you'll hear me say connection suggestions or connections as we go through this. But I'm starting out in our service mapping module under application services. And I'm going to search for our Trek service and I'm going to load that map. So as our service map is loading for today's example, I want to reiterate something really important that Luke mentioned, which is that in ServiceNow, there are three primary ways to go about service mapping. Uh, one being with our predefined patterns, the second being tag-based, which Robin's going to demo for us in just a few minutes, and the third being traffic-based um, service mapping, which is what you're looking at here. Now, traffic-based service mapping is typically known as being most inclusive. You can kind of think about it as casting the widest net to bring in all those CIs into your service map. But some feedback we were getting from our customers was their service maps via traffic base were getting a little bit cluttered. They were having some CIs be mapped automatically that weren't necessarily belonging to that map and they didn't intentionally want to add. And so to address that, we introduced the machine learning based connection suggestions that we're gonna go through. So you could be a little bit more intentional with what's added to your traffic based service maps. Now, every single one of our service maps does have an entry point. So for the sake of our example here, we have this entry point server. And all the other CIs under this specific map were actually added via our connection suggestions. Um, so taking a look, I'm going to right click on this specific entry point here, this CI, and I'm going to pop open our connection suggestions table. 
So what we're looking at, this is our table just for that specific CI. It's popping out these suggestions, just like it sounds. And I want to first kind of go over where this data is coming from that's generating all these suggestions for us to take a look at and potentially add these CI connections to our service map. Part of it, this being a traffic based map is coming from the CMDB. You know, it's still capturing that traffic data. If there's a, uh, for example, a process running that's connecting two servers, the CMDB still is tracking that. But beyond that, the majority of the data that's backing these suggestions is really coming from something we call application fingerprints. And we're going to go into what that looks like in just a second. But essentially, the application fingerprint data and the CMDB traffic data is supporting these algorithms with, with spitting out these connections suggestions for us. And on each one, we can see the confidence interval, how confident the system is in this match. We can see the decision column to see if any action has been taken on these suggestions so far, which really helps with virtual collaboration, as we know, to see if something's already been added or if there's still action for us to take on these suggestions here. Now that was for the CI level. We can also see our suggestions at the map level by popping this window open. We can see quite a few more results and still with those same data points of the confidence level as well as our actions to be taken. Now, if you were so inclined, you could also see your connection suggestions across your entire instance under the service mapping uh, module as well. But for the rest of our few minutes here, I wanna actually dive into the application fingerprinting data source that I mentioned, which is what's generating those suggestions to come to us in the first place and take action on. So I just went to our discovery homepage here and now I'm navigating into this application fingerprints widget. And basically what application fingerprinting is doing in ServiceNow, it's bringing in all this process data and it's just running machine learning over it. So it can say, hey, these processes look really familiar, we're clustering them, and we think this might be an application that we've discovered on your network that you might want to discover intentionally and have a service map for. Mapping those connections can be really important. So sticking with our example here, I'm going to search for that Trex application service. And I want to call out that for discovery to even begin to discover any application CIs, it needs three things. One being a process classifier, the CMDB class to put that data in, and then the pattern to start looking for those right attributes. Uh, if you've messed around with patterns in service now, it's not the quickest of tasks, but we do have quite a few of those built out of the box. Where this used to become a bit of an issue was where you had your homegrown applications, smaller applications, but application fingerprinting really addresses that. Again, it's using machine learning to run that over that process data and generate those three things for you. So to show you an example that's already been done, I'm going to go into our preprocessor option here, and we can see that the application suggestion has come in. It said, hey, we found process data. We think you might want to discover this as an application. We can see the pattern. It's already been created, the class, and the classifier role. So we did not have to spend time manually doing that. We could click discover, but for the sake of time, I will show you one that's already been discovered, my index server here. That discover button goes away and in its place again we can still see the pattern data and all that class data that was used to discover that application and now we have a very intentional map and again this is being used to support that connection suggestions feature and uh with that i know that was pretty quick we have a short timeline today we'll take questions in the chat but i'll pass it over to robin for her demo great lauren thank you so much appreciate that let me go ahead and share my screen and uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating for you the, um, the tag-based service mapping, which is the quickest way to gather ROI for cloud-based services. So um, as you all know, or maybe you don't, um, when we do discovery, we are pulling in your tags. So you can see here from this one virtual machine instance that I have all of the key values uh, and the values here from the tags that we pulled in from discovery. So we're going to be layering on top of that um, using uh, tag-based service mapping. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some tag-based service maps that are already created. Uh, as we can see here, we have several. I'm going to focus in on this one, uh, the bottom one called recommendation colon colon prod, okay? And there's a reason why it's named that. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. But when we view this map, and I have it already created here, shown here, just for the sake of time, because I know we're gonna be running out. Um, so this is what your map looks like, looks like a, a traditional service map, right? With your entry points, um, the recommendation prod uh, service, 
and all of the components that we found using the tag-based service mapping. So what I'd like to do from here is I would like to quickly delete this, this service map for you. And I'm going to show you how we're going to recreate it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's delete it. And while that's being done, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using um, CI tag categories and service families to pull together the information that we need to create our service maps. So with that, what we do is we're gonna come down here to CI tag categories. And I have uh, some CI tag categories already created for this particular demonstration. We have application service and environment that we're gonna be focusing in on. So application service, if I drill into the CI tag category, basically what it does is, you know, you may have different development groups um, tagging things with different tag keys. So this allows you to group them all together uh, with this tag category name so that we're looking at app, app service, application, app service, and service tags for the application name. And then similarly, we also have the environment as a CI tag category. And again, we have end environment and stage um, as the tag keys that we're grouping together to create our environment. So you'll also notice that we have this, what we call service families. And the service family called application services is using this CI tag category along with our application services, which I'm going to show you here under service families. So when we create the service family, what we're gonna do is we're grouping together those CI tag categories that we created earlier. So now um, the reason why that particular uh, tag-based service was called recommendation colon colon prod earlier was because we're automatically uh, naming it the uh, first tag, okay, colon colon second tag. So in my particular example, recommendation is the application name and production was the environment for that, all right? So uh, what I like to show you here too is the fact that uh, we also have three, um, uh, three service maps that are using this application services already. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to view the service candidates. So now we should see recommendation prod showing up as a candidate for um, tag-based tag service mapping. We can go ahead and we can click on that and say map selected. Once we've successfully mapped the tag, now remember, we're just pulling back the information that we already have in the CMDB. So that's why it's so spiffily quick. So uh, we can go ahead and we can say, okay, here. And now what I like to do is come back to our tag-based services. Let's view our recommendation prod that we see now in our list. And um, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and recalculate the service just because um, it takes some time to have it automatically recalculate. I just wanna make sure for the sake of time um, that I'm able to show it to you. And you can see here that we have um, the service populator status now set to ready, and we can go ahead and we can view the map. And we should see uh, the same map that we saw when we started out the demonstration for tag-based service mapping as it loads. So here we go, we have our entry point, a recommendation prod, and all of the components that make it up based upon the tagging strategies that were put in place. So that concludes the demonstration for tag-based service mapping. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pass it back over to Cooper for our next section. All right, nice job, everybody. Um, as mentioned before, we can get into the questions portion. We do have a few that flowed into the chat. Lauren, thank you for answering um, those that came in, not via the Q&A, appreciate that. Um, all right, so first questions from Frederick. How does service mapping on a high level know which CIs are involved from the entry point? Does it try to perform a transaction? Go ahead, Lauren. Sorry, my audio cut out for a second. Let me read through that unless you want to take it, Robin. 
Yeah, so basically that's going through um, the discovery. So when it's looking for your host, that entry point, it's going to kick off. If it's not already in your CMDB, it's going to go ahead and kick off that horizontal discovery until it finds it. So it might kick off the Shazam probe to go out and locate that host so it can build a map based on that. And then on top of that, um, what it specifically is ML memorizing to build service apps? So yeah, the, the machine learning, basically it's looking at those application fingerprinting data. So it's looking at the processes that are running, you know, discovery in itself is detecting a lot of running process data as it's searching through what's available on your network. So it's basically looking for trends or patterns there. And it's logically grouping that pattern data based on similarities it's finding. So the application fingerprint portion, which is where the machine learning comes into play saying, hey, this process data, they were logically grouped. These are similar. We think this might be alluding to an application that you might want to go ahead and discover. And then based on discovering that application, that's linking back to relationships in existing maps or new maps that need to be created. But really, the machine learning is looking at that process data. Gotcha, gotcha. I think Alex just chimed in, too, in the chat. And all this is done uh, without agent discovery, correct? Yeah, of course, that'll depend on your setup, but the discovery for the ServiceNow way is typically done agentless unless you are looking at the agent client collector, but it's not dependent on agent based connections. All right, a couple more that came in here. Um, can we use tag based service mapping if our tag governance is messy? I'll go ahead and take that one. Um, well, we did mention, Luke mentioned actually, our tag governance, uh, which is our new capability within visibility that will help you um, with making sure that your tags are, are standardized and, and they're, they're up to par to create the appropriate service maps for you. And then last one here, how do my service maps get updated as my CIs change? Sorry, coming off mute here. So basically, again, that's going to be done via discovery. And that's why we really enforce um, and encourage you having live discovery instead of manually updating all of your CMDB data, because that way we can be kind of versatile. We have those changes coming into the CMDB. And then the service maps go hand in hand with the CMDB. So as discovery is pulling in changes, those will be reflected by the CI changes in your service maps. Awesome. I think we have one one more quick one. Is it possible to see a historical view of my service map when I make changes? No, that's a great question, too. So as that data, again, is being pulled into the CMDB, if you wanted to see changes at the specific CI level, you can certainly see those changes, new values, old values in your CMDB. But also as part of our service maps, you can actually see a comparison view. So you could set point A and point B and see the service map changes that have occurred or any changes at the CI level that might have taken place during that interval. All right. So thank you all again for your time. As mentioned before the start of the session, uh, please be on the lookout for that follow up email that will contain the recording of the session, your $25 Uber Eats gift card redemption code, um, as well as those pieces of collateral, collateral that will dive deeper into this topics that we went over today. With that being said, thanks, Lauren, Robin, Luke, everybody have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, all. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.